uh, I have no financial interest to disclose. Um, uh, so amblyopia so far it has been defined as a decrease in visual acuity caused by abnormal binocular interaction in one or both eyes as a result of pattern vision deprivation during critical period for which no cause can be detected during physical examination and which in appropriate cases is reversible by therapeutic measures. So when we are evaluating and treating amblyopia, the factor that we mostly concentrate on has been a reduction in best corrected visual acuity. However, we also need to remember that there are other visual problems such as spatial distortion, positional uncertainty, reduction in contrast sensitivity, poor accommodation, poor binocularity and stereopsis. This can lead the affected children to have reduced uh, reading speed and compromised fine motor skills, thereby affecting their overall scho scholastic performance. Now, amblyopia uh, over the decades has been treated with the various modalities that is refractive correction, occlusion therapy or penalization of the sound eye, and uh, various drugs such as um, levodopa and citicoline have also been used. Of these, um, the patching of the sound eye has been the mainstay of amblyopia uh, treatment uh, and it was so far uh, believed that it cannot be treated beyond a certain age, that is beyond the age of 8 to 10 years or so. And also for uh, most uh, many practitioners believed in the more the better principle that is um, that followed long hours of patching and sometimes in some cases even full time occlusion. However, this is met with many barriers such as poor compliance or reduced attention span amongst children and poor recovery of binocularity and stereopsis. Um, so this brings us to today's talk. Uh, we will be discussing various newer modalities of uh, amblyop amblyopia therapy. I will be talking about uh, one of the novel modalities called orthoptic magnocellular stimulator. Um, then we have Dr. Sandra Chandramoli, who is a senior consultant in Department of Pediatrics, Arvindai Hospital, Goimbatur. She will be telling us about the software Binox and its uses. Then we have uh, Dr. Kaushik Murli, sir, who is the Chief of Pediatric Services in Shankara Eye Hospital, Bangalore. And uh, he will be beginning this talk with the um, details on uh, Visual Prime, Visio Prime uh, Vision Therapy System. Then we have Dr. Damaris Magdalene and uh, she is the Chief of Pediatric Services in Sri Shankar Deva Eye Hospital uh, in Gohati and uh, she will be telling us all about revital vision therapy. Uh, I will be talking about uh, orthoptic based magnocellular stimulation. So uh, this is a novel modality of uh, treatment for amblyopia and uh, this is uh, uh, this has been produced and marketed by Carditech Private Limited in Bangalore. It mainly works via the stimulation of two pathways that is magnocellular pathway and attention mechanism. Via uh, these two there is an increase in uh, influx of top down impulses to the um, occipital area and it causes repeated foveal stimulation thereby improving the visual acuity. So a little bit more in depth regarding this. Uh, so we know that this is a visual pathway and vision is a complex process which starts in the retina and ends in the primary visual cortex area. However, there are different components that is uh, the what component of vision which is mainly mediated via the uh, parvocellular uh, pathway or the P, uh, P cells and this generally deals with the form and the other structural components of the um, target of, uh, of the target. So this is mainly the what of vision and it is um, processed in the inferior temporal cortex. Also uh, there is a magnocellular pathway uh, which also uh, which mainly deals with the wire that is positional um, the position in space and the movement of the um, peripheral objects this uh, pathway ends up in the uh, ends up being processed in the superior parietal area this uh, means i mean the where part of vision is um, processed here and throughout the pathway there is an intricate connection between um, both the m cell pathway and p cell pathway so these are um, the different areas in the brain which deal with the following so one of the important places is the um, posterior parietal cortex which is a sensory motor integration center this gets activated on 
uh, on in, uh, seeing any kind of stimuli, uh, stimulus and also during the generation of a saccadic movement or a prosaccade and this sends impulses to the occipital cortex thereby stimulating it. In addition, very close to the posterior parietal cortex, we have the attention area, which directs the fovea uh, to the, um, the object of interest. So, whenever we either um, see something in a peripheral field of vision, uh, what happens is there is simultaneous stimulation of different areas in the brain, that is occipital, parietal and uh, this thing, even the frontal regions of the brain. Also, uh, there is close to this frontal eye field, we also have the motor area for hand. So, um, when, we uh, along, uh, when we move the hand to point at the laser light, we see that even this area is stimulated and all these are interconnected and all of these keep firing and they send impulses to the occipital area which in turn stimulates it. So basically what happens in this machine is there are flickering lights um, seen in the periphery, uh, periphery of visual field and um, when the patient moves his eyes to fix on that, a saccade is generated. When the um, saccades are repeatedly generated, the amblyopic eye is made to execute these saccades repeatedly and in different directions. So via the um, firing of all of these areas on both sides of the brain, what happens is there is, there are, there is an increase in impulses to the cortex area and the visual association areas and uh, this is said to overcome the foveal separation and improve the vision and also binocularity because it is happening on both sides. Uh, so indications. Uh, I will start with the most common indications. Uh, it was first started for different kinds of um, different kinds of amblyopias, um, ametropic amblyopia, different kinds of anisometropic amblyopia, even strabismic amblyopia in some cases after the correction of the strabismus, and stimulation deprivation amblyopia in very few selected cases. Along with this, those people who have been successfully treated for screen cases, also it has been used in certain cases and to reduce the recurrence of squint after surgery in uh, intermittent exotropia by improving the focus and the control. Now, these are some of the less common causes that is to uh, reduce the nystagmus, improve hand-eye coordination and um, other problems in children with cerebral palsy. It has also been used in multiple cranial nerve palsies in very few cases. Uh, so, uh, when we see a patient, what we need to do is first we need to get a, uh, we need to verify the diagnosis ourselves, that is via a detailed history regarding the duration and nature of the condition, a full cycloplegic refraction so as to prescribe the optimal uh, optical correction. In case there is an anisometropia, we can also consider contact lens for, be uh, for better compliance and uh, for better effectiveness of the therapy. Unocular and binocular vision requires to be recorded. Sensory evaluation, at least the basics of uh, binocular, uh, binocular single vision is uh, worth four dot test and uh, stereopsis can be recorded. Investigations are not a must, but in case we have certain um, doubts regarding the diagnosis or we are unsure, it is always better to establish it via relevant investigations uh, in cases even maybe via electrophysiological testing and so on. So basically this is what the instrument looks like. Uh, there is a black uh, shiny board with nine LED lights. And the peripheral ones are uh, white, in white in color and there is a central red one. So there are different modes. The uh, red one is always on and the ones in the periphery keep uh, flickering randomly. This green color corresponds to the laser uh, light from the laser pointer which is given to the patient. So there's a video here. I'll play it. Okay. The uh, during a therapy session, the patient is made to sit at one meter distance, wearing the optimal correction uh, such that his eye level is at the level of the red light. Then he is uh, instructed to quickly point uh, point at the light that is uh, that is flickering using a laser pointer. This also helps with the hand-eye coordination. Uh, first, it is done with the Mm, amblyopic eye open and the good eye patched for 20 minutes. Following that, um, the patching is reversed and the good eye is treated for 5 minutes and then uh, there is no patching and binocularly we treat for 5 minutes. 
this is the first kind of um, therapy which involves uh, an overt attention mechanism after this we do the second mode of therapy that is we ask the patient to not move his eyes and to concentrate on the central red light as the lights uh, the white lights are flickering on and off the patient is supposed to count them uh, here we recommend about two, uh, 300 times it depends on um, the attention of the child and many other factors also Uh, so the frequency uh, what we do is when the patient first comes for therapy we give one session ask them to take a break of one hour and give one more session following this depending on uh, the ease of the patient either we give one session a day for a uh, daily for 15 days or uh, if the patient is in a hurry or something uh, then we give two uh, twice a day for a week uh, maintenance therapy requires one session a week later then uh, once in every two months usually beyond 6 months it is not required and the uh, improvement that has been noted will remain uh, at every follow up we have to note the um, visual acuity the presence of binocular single vision and the improvement in stereopsis if the patient has squint we need to measure the magnitude uh, serially so our experience this has been tried in a small clinical uh, setup so we have been able to try it only uh, in two different centers uh, on the 68 patients um, actually i think uh, no i think the previous one has been added to this uh, no, i think she can continue okay. we have time yes thank you um so the uh, mean age of patients was 12 years and we have um treated a large uh, age group of patients that is 5 to 40 years uh, most of the patients were female and uh, we have tried it on all kinds of amblyopias but uh, mainly we have had success with only anisometropic amblyopia uh, strabismic we have had about four patients and stimulation deprivation that is uh, children with uh, unilateral pseudophakia have been uh, three uh, others include uh, one patient with nystagmus and uh, two more patients uh, in whom the cause of uh, visual deprivation could not be found out Uh, this is a very uh, rough calculation of the improvement in visual acuity uh, a mean of uh, pre therapy visual acuity was 0.62 logmar and uh, it improved to 0.128 uh, at the beginning of therapy only four patients had binocular single vision uh, following therapy uh, uh, it has been uh, recorded in 48 patients uh, and stereopsis was very poor at the beginning of therapy Uh, less than 3000 seconds later on we saw that 48 patients had uh, developed good stereopsis of around 120 seconds of arc and 20 had developed uh, up to 480 seconds of arc uh, i'll just run through these cases this is one child who had um, strabismic amblyopia that is her right eye had um, a small esotropia and her vision was 618 parts the other eye had vision of 69 following the therapy it has uh, improved to 69 that is in the right eye that is only one line difference between the two eyes uh, following this we could not improve it further hence uh, we have posted her for a squint correction and she has uh, uh, her motor align was uh, alignment was also improved after this uh, next is a child who underwent uh, cataract uh, cataract surgery at a young age of 4 and following that he did not receive both optical correction or any form of amblyopia therapy so after providing the optical correction we saw that his vision had improved from 3 by 60 to 6 by 60 and following the um, uh, Uh, orthoptic magnocellular therapy uh, therapy it had improved even to 66 but however over time it regressed to 69 parts uh, this is a documentation of that this is uh, like each session of therapy where we see that it has improved to 66 but um, there was a slight regression over some period of time uh so uh, coming to my observations uh, we see that when we begin the therapy the amblyopia uh, tends to imp- improve rapidly in the first two weeks to about 69 or 612 but beyond that the final improvement takes some time uh, binocularity and stereopsis improves quickly even before the individual monocular vision hand eye coordination in these children improves and the improvements noted last for a long time i have followed up uh, a, a few patients up to one year however uh, mm, it is noted that a small amount of regression is sometimes there 
therapy can be started in very young children also provided they are cooperative uh, so these are some of the other observations few children find this stimulation to be very intense and may cry during the therapy this requires the parents to be reassured and the therapy can be continued then there is another uh, phenomenon that is jack in the box phenomenon uh, that here they say that there, uh, sometimes some children say that the letters are appearing and disappearing uh, so this is uh, common during the initial parts of uh, the therapy after that it slowly decreases also uh, there is this phenomenon that uh, right to left reading is seen to improve in most cases like when we are making them read from the vision chart they read better from the starting from the left uh, starting from the right and moving towards the left as compared to left to right reading uh, uh, however the reason for this is not yet known and hand handwriting is also uh, uh, and also the scholastic performance is seen to improve in the future uh, in children after therapy that is we can see this from a very uh, satisfied mother of one of the children it seems he has um, decreased making mistakes in the school work uh, so uh, to summarize it all orthoptic uh, microcellular stimulator is a novel technique in amblyopia management it can be also tried in older children and adults however the success is much more in younger children uh, apart from uh, st apart from amblyopia it can also be tried in controlling of uh, strabismus and some children uh, and uh, children with uh, nystagmus uh, development delay and speech impairment also we note a rapid improvement in the first few sessions and later on it slows down sometimes there is there is a chance of a small amount of regression over time during which we can repeat the therapy and the improvement obtained uh, overall lasts for a long time thank you thank you uh, very much shilpa uh, we can um, take two questions now and then we'll go on to the next speaker what is the cost of it? uh the cost ma'am uh, mainly uh, the cost is per session the whole the instrument um it comes to around um, one or uh, I think one to you can give the contact of yeah, yeah. Uh, that is i think they have uh, yeah, the uh, cost of uh, mm, that's uh, for the uh, yeah for, uh, we, we basically have to buy it once that is all uh, ma'am i'll share you uh, share with you the contact of the, the person cost, uh, which the he cost. has given to me is 1.45 okay. lakhs the instrument Uh, that is up to us, ma'am. That See, uh, we can vary. Uh, can be worked out in each place. It kind of varies from each. It's not uniform. So whatever works for you, you can do it in your place. Uh, we have a uh, yes. It has. This has been described this way, but I have personally not dealt with the um, children with autism and giving this particular therapy. Uh, most of my uh, since like i said it's a um, it was a small clinic where i was practicing in when i did this so mainly it was anisometropic and few cases of strabismic amblyopia uh, um this is uh, min it's carditech private limited in bangalore um uh, i'll give you i will share with you the contact sir minimum vision i have Please tried uh, 6 by 60 set or uh, yeah 6 6 by 60 best corrected i have tried beyond this only the initial setting when you do for the children uh, do they do it for few se sessions full or just 10 15 minutes like that you know uh, no no few sessions full we basically ask them to come uh, early in the morning when they are well rested in a good mood and all that usually a patient a parent sits with them during the session okay and i used to follow them up every day actually uh, like i used to once the session was over i used to send them uh, to get a snack or something and once they are well relaxed after about 20 minutes to half an hour i used to see and i used to myself uh, verify the visual acuity and other functions but only only question about this or lot of uh, things are going on for this sort of treatment to call the patient for 15 consecutive days is the most uh, i used to call them during that? the vacation on the vacation yeah, yeah. okay yeah um uh, 